Hello, Morning. welcome to Crazy Blessed Worship. I'm Coley D, and I'm really excited to introduce you to one of my inner circle friends, the original Rick Ross. And I'm real quick going to start off by just getting to why in the world I'm referring to him as the original Rick Ross. So, Rick, why don't you go ahead and share the story? <laughs> my story about the original Rick Ross. <clears throat> well, it turns out that my name is very similar to the famous rapper Rick Ross. And back in the day when we had before Facebook, there was a, another platform called MySpace. And I had a music site on there and um, <clears throat> by the name of Rick Ross. And that's what I went by back then before the original Rick Ross. And uh, I was contacted by a lot of the rapper friends of the rapper Rick Ross that I wasn't the real Rick Ross. <clears throat> and they would cuss me out and say, you're, you know, you're a fraud. And uh, they eventually had me kicked off of MySpace. And so I decided to change my name to, well, as I, in, in, in one sense, I changed my name to this. I changed my name to, to, um, to a name that, uh, people would automatically recognize because I, I would say original, just just to almost to get back at them. I almost did it to to get back at them when I said original because because I found out that wasn't his real name. The, the rapper Rick Ross, he took the name from some other guy. So that being the case, and plus I was born before him anyway, so I was I'm older than this dude, right? So I'm the original Rick Ross. He's not the original. Rick Ross. I'm the original Rick Ross, <clears throat> and so. Uh, since then, I've decided to, to in order for you to find me on YouTube or any other site, I, I would go by the original Rick W. Ross. So that way, I you can distinguish my, I can distinguish myself from him. So you don't have to worry about knowing who I am and that I am the real Rick Ross. I'm the original Rick Ross. I'm not the rapper Rick Ross. I'm a different Rick Ross than that Rick Ross. <laughs> so. The things we do defending a name. It's right. so interesting um, because both my maiden and my married name are in like one of the top 10,000 or something uh, most popular last names. And I was just like, really? really? And uh, I start looking around like Minnesota, for example, where I live, there's a lot of people's last names that end in S-O-N or S-E-N. And that's by and large because this is a huge Scandinavian area. So... Mm -hmm. There's, um, there's, what is it? We call it 10,000 lakes or the land of 10,000 lakes, but also it's known as the land of 10,000 Petersons. I know Hansons, <laughs> Hendersons, Sorensons. There's so many like different wow. O-N or E-Ns. And wow. you look at it and my dad had a very unique first name. And we asked him, or I asked my grandma, why did you give my dad his name the way you did? And she was like, with a last name like this, there is absolutely no way anybody would know which one they're talking about if we named him John, for example. <laughs> you know? So right. it's interesting how we have this challenge to stand out with our names. And then when it comes to doing music or anything mm -hmm. in any kind of entertainment industry, it's like you have to have your specifics with your name. And when you get a mm -hmm. sign up with your music or whatever it might be, there is such a crazy conflict with like, you can have your songs show up in somebody else's accounts, you know, and get, they're starting to get exactly. paid. I've heard those stories too. Um, I've heard those stories too, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like yeah. crazy just what you have to do to stand out. So I think it's kind of fun. And as what we like to call him in the inner circle, as we're always referring to him as OG. So if you right. hear me say that, I'm not trying to call him anything offensive. <laughs> It's just straight up the original. I won't be offended, I promise. I won't be offended. <laughs> that is a nice thing. One thing I do appreciate about Rick here is that he doesn't generally seem to offend easily. And um, <laughs> it seems to be a rare and rare trait these days. But, uh, you know, the other thing why I wanted to bring Rick on here is he has been around the block, so to speak, when it comes to the music industry. Um, he has recorded more albums than anybody I know this year <laughs> or in the last year. <laughs> and sure. um, he's just cranking them out. So I wanted to have him share a little bit that might be helpful to you guys. And then he has some just 
really cool testimonies and um, we kind of love to get into those. So first, why don't you tell them how many records have you done in the last year or albums? In the last 10 months since April. Okay. I've just completed uh, just this week. I just finished my third album. Okay. So it's basically, I think I had 10 songs on the first one, nine on the second one. Uh, this one I have 10, but I'm, re I'm redoing some of them. And, so, and plus I do have some of the, uh, the Elevate Pro songs. So, so in all in total is like 28 songs recorded um, this past 10 months. He's a lot of songs are older songs that I never had a chance to record before. I mean, I have, I've been writing songs for forever and, uh, but I never had the opportunity to professionally record them. You know, you'd put stuff on, I put stuff on, you know, on uh, YouTube just for my webcam, but uh, just me playing the guitar and singing, but you know, to have it done professionally to, so that people will be more interested in seeing them. I decided mm -hmm. to go record some of these songs that, you know, uh, that's why we joined the inner circle. Uh, was to see how we can get their songs out there and and get some advice of how to record them and how professionally they need to be, you know, before people actually want to hear them. So yeah, so I spent a, some a good amount of time and, and money to to try to get the songs recorded properly. And uh, and I like to what I like to do is do uh, uh, lyric videos or just you know regular music videos where I'm actually in the music videos. I think I have four of those. The rest of them are just lyric videos. But that's the way I've, I've been trying to get them out there is is through uh, YouTube lyric videos for the most part and i have three songs coming up here within the next three weeks that are probably going to be out because i just got one of our our, our brothers uh scotty d and his brothers uh he has three of my songs right now he's working on those for the next three lyric videos and that's a big chorus song in that one right oh what up no actually those three i gave him are not because that song what's the song hallelujah to the lamb hallelujah to the lamb is another song it's on the current album that we haven't finished mixing or mastering yet. Uh, these okay. other three songs were from the previous album that I wanted lyric videos to. So this the, for this current album, I, current album, I'm just finishing up. I don't have any songs done that's that are out there yet or going to be um, uh, or put to lyric, lyric videos yet. So, I, but I do want to have that done. That one particular song because I was just talking to my uh, producer the other day that uh, I want that song done before April first. For our mm -hmm. years, wow. years time up with uh, I want that out there. So okay. I think we're gonna have that. Yeah. This is fun for me. The more people that I interview, there's so much like I almost want to say cross pollination in the inner circle because mm -hmm. like you're you're doing a song with Scott. I have done a song with Scott. Scott Declare Jr. Go check out his music. He Scott's awesome. Um, there's mm -hmm. also an interview with him. If you want to look back? We did an interview on his really popular song war on thoughts and uh let's see scott and rick and then uh the rapper john rockmore we were actually all staying separately in a different hotel than everybody else from the inner circle when we went down to uh rick Pino and adam carpenter's mastermind down the austin area and we mm -hmm. were joking that we were set apart <laughs> Because like, I think we were That's like 15 right. minutes from everyone else. We had this awesome um, hotel. I, I actually think I recognized their room from, there was a group Marco Polo. I'm like, that looks a lot like my room. <laughs> Starting to figure out like, hey, we're in the same hotel. So we were able to ride back mm -hmm. and forth. Rick was awesome and, and drove us to and from the venue. And uh, it's so interesting to me because, so I've done a song with Scott. Rick's done a song with Scott. Scott's done songs with lots of people, hasn't he? <laughs> and he then... wants to co-write. In fact, he's down in Florida right now with a co-wrote co, co uh, we co-write go, uh, group down in Florida right now. He drove all the way down there to Jack right. to uh, St. Augustine to yes. be part of a co-write. He's he does a lot of those. Yeah. Yes, he's got a lot moving. And uh, yeah. Then we had so so Rick and I and then John Rockmore are working with couple other people that have been on this podcast um like Ahmad is gonna put everything together Ahmad Washington his interview yeah. is in our playlist if you want to check that out too and mm -hmm. um yeah it's kind of interesting seeing how I've gotten to work with everybody that was at that hotel at this point so mm -hmm. um we've got a lot of music just collectively coming out of the inner circle alone and I'm really really excited to bring those forth 
on this podcast and in our Spotify playlist. I know some of you guys have been checking that out and have been loving it. Some of you haven't even seen the, the Spotify podcast yet or the Spotify playlist yet. The podcast mm-hmm. is going on there. And then pretty much anybody that's in the crazy blessed worship family that's been active in the group. I've been like, why can't I promote my friends on my own playlist? Why do we need to go wrestling? Like I want to be put on your playlist. Like, no, we're supposed to raise each other up. This doesn't have to be a competition. So it's been neat. I think, I don't know how many playlists I have Rick on at this point, but (laughs) he keeps cranking them out. And there's one song that I really wanted to touch base on. Um, I've got like some of Rick's songs have made me cry. There's songs I'm like, man, he's just like got such a really good way of like uplifting with the words that he uses to um, his music video washed away. It's awesome. I'm just going to I'll link that in the description of the video on YouTube or if you're on the Facebook Mm -hmm. group watching this. I'll make sure all the links that we talk about with these songs show up for you in the the post in the sections. And um, Rick gave me permission to read this. This is uh, a song that I actually, I asked him if I could learn it for my church. And it's called, This is the Day. And I just, I want to read it because of the words. Again, this kind of speaks a lot into what Rick's heart is. So it's, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. It doesn't matter what the circumstances say. I will rejoice and be glad anyway. This is the day. And right there in the chorus, I'm like, oh, boom. (laughs) But when you break down the rest of the song and the verses, when I'm feeling down, feeling lonely and afraid, when things don't always go my way, I know you're there to get the answers that I need, Lord. You lift me up once again. Boom. And it's when the ones that I love hurt me with the words they say, it can be so hard to walk away pain-free. It's only when I pray for them that you heal me deep inside. Thank you, Lord, for dealing with my pride. It's like very honest words here. (laughs) And when those times come, when I feel you've turned your back on me, when I feel rejected and betrayed, like when I've lost a loved one and it makes no sense to me, but Lord, I know you know all things. And just the way it keeps going back to this is the day. It doesn't matter what the circumstances say. I love that. I'll rejoice and be glad anyway. And it's like, these are some things that some people are afraid to talk about. And uh, to be able to put some of those things into a song, I just think they're so very important because it makes people be able to realize, you know what? I'm not the only one that feels this way. And I like how it redirects back into, it doesn't matter what the circumstances say. And it's pointing it back to the Lord and that we can have joy in these things. And there's different things in Rick's music where he just points out just different little nuggets and it's very real, but there's not necessarily like the specific rhyme or reason either, which is really cool. So it's like, you just listen to his music and it's just, it's not one of those things where you listen to, I want to call it a curated playlist and you can actually get bored these days because it's like, everything is so similar in this cookie cutter box. And um, I'm just kind of curious if you speak a little bit into where that song came from, if there's a testimony behind that you'd like to share. Yeah, okay, I will share what, okay, first of all, that that verse of scripture, this is the day the Lord's made, is, is Psalm 118 verse 24. And that was really actually referring to God building his house. And this is the day the Lord's made, we're building a house for him. But we've heard a song back in the past. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the, we will rejoice, we will be. So based on that old song, which is an old song, and we, we need new songs, right? About rejoicing the Lord always, those kind of things. So based on that, and just going through, uh, the idea of, you know, I'm going to rejoice anyway. It doesn't matter, you know, what the circumstances say, because, you know, we, that's, that's, that's the word word says, we, you know, t- count it all joy when you find yourself in diverse tribals because they know in the trying your faith versus patience, but it's, it's, it's about the, it's the idea of counting all joy, joy, no matter what you're going through, count it all joy, no matter what trials you're going through, no matter what, you know, uh, bad day you may be having, we're still supposed to count it all joy that that's part of knowing that God's in the midst of our circumstances. He's in the midst of whatever we're going through. And you're acknowledging that he's in there, you know, by saying, okay, I'm going to count it all joy, Lord, because I know you're in this thing. You're you're in this trial with me. 
You, you haven't forsaken me because I'm in a trial. You're here with me. And so that's the idea. The idea is that he is there no matter what. And so you're acknowledging him by saying, I'm going to count all joy anyway, because I knew you're in this with me, Lord. And so basically that's what, that's what I was going through a trial when I was writing the song. You know, it was a relationship the struggle I was having. And then I threw a couple other verses about the times when I, you know, my, my mom dying and some my brother dying. And just, you know, it's, it's important just not to forsake God. Cause I know people, a lot of people, they, some people, when they die, they just want to forsake God altogether. I know we can't do that. We got to come closer to them. We got to get, we got to draw near even closer than we've ha ever have been, you know, especially when you're, you're dealing with pain, you know, pain a lot of times just, just pushes people away from God. They don't want anything to do with God because they're in so much pain and they blame God for it. Yeah. That's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to, you know, acknowledge him in those situations and know that he's in there and helping us through the, through the pain that we're going through. So basically that's what the came, the song came through. The, you know, like the, there's one verse there talks about, you know, um, sometimes our loved ones offend us and that happens, may happen a lot. And so uh, the only way through it for me is to pray, you know, pray for them. That's the only way you get healed from the pain and, and the, the offense that you've been, you've been dealing with. So um to me it's the quickest way out of being in being offended and being hurt is to pray through that so basically rejoice it all always and god pray we're praying in a situation so hey, he's, he's you know we're, we're getting through it faster we're getting healed faster if we acknowledge god in the situation we're in and we're counting it all joy so. that's really funny you say that because um you know i was having a kind of a rough time trying to line up getting some of my dry vocals reported for the ZP that I'm working on. And um, a lot of it just had to be like lining up scheduling. And I had to drive away to the specific studio that I wanted to go to. And um, I just had like so many things going on this day. And one of my friends was really sweet and she was watching my kids. And she is a lady that is a blesser, literally like her mm -hmm. gift is being a giver. And uh, I just absolutely love her. I know a lot of Marians, but there's something to that name I'm telling you. And she had some things. She was like, why don't you look here? She was she was kind of like, is there anything you want out of this? She, she just gives stuff to people all the time. It's like she has kind of a cool story in itself. But I got this bracelet from her that day, and I didn't think anything of it. It was just like a little brown leather cord, and I kind of like corded bracelets. And I get home, and I'm looking at it, and I realized burned in the leather it says count it all joy <laughs> you know and i was thinking about it was kind mm. of one of those trial days and mm. and literally i wear that all the time i'm looking at it and i'm like count it all joy and it's so funny how that phrase really sticks out just in anything going on anymore so um i tell you there's a god timing yeah. thing in that too <laughs> yes this there is so i am wondering if you have any advice for anybody that is just kind of starting to maybe get into it or um, maybe they're just fresh on the block, so to speak. Anything that you have found challenging that you wish you knew maybe, or one thing that's great to learn from is other people's mistakes. <laughs> Anything you want to throw out there, some sage advice for us? Well, I know for me, I know the timing was right for, that's one thing, you know, is, is I knew that timing was right for me to do this. You know, I, I have the opportunity to have some extra money to do it. So that, that really helped a lot. Okay. Um, not everybody's at the same place, you know, um, as far as that goes, as far as the money goes. I mean, if you, you it's one thing to have songs, it's one thing is to have the ability to sing, the ability to, pl to play, but if you don't have the resources to do something about it, then that's gonna that can be a big hindrance, and so it does help to have some extra money. But I mean, in my situation, may be different from somebody else's, where they may have somebody supporting their, you know, their whatever they're doing, you know, supporting them financially. Um, so that situation can be different. But as far as the songs go, <clears throat> I know my, a lot of my songs have been all all my songs are basically experiences. You know, uh, I think it's important to have your experiences in your in your songs. If you listen to any, <laughs> most of my songs, are not just uh, they're similar to that that one song you pointed out. Um, my last song was is called "Yes, I'm in Love with Jesus," you know, and it's just basically a love song to him. And so, I think it's really important to have that, you know, whatever you're going through, re being relatable in your songs. It's very important to have relatable songs. It's very important to have hooks in your songs. I've written a lot of songs. I've just, I've just 
put aside because they don't have hooks. And I know this, that they're not going to be catchy enough for people to hear and want to hear. Uh, they have to have some some kind of hook in it that it will, will grab you and will make you want to sing it along, sing along. And it's easy to sing along because there's something about it that's that gets you. It, it hooks you into the song. And so it's important to have those. Um, I, and, and, you know, not every song can can be a great hook. But I mean, to me, it's very important to have that. Um, and I think the more you do it uh, lately, this this past uh, year has been very fruitful as far as I'm concerned, because I've had the opportunity to spend more time writing, too. So um, that makes to have the time to do it is very important. Have time, resources, time. Time is is crucial to be able to wait on God and and have Him pour into you song because you have to sit there and wait. Basically, and, you know, I for me, I play I'll, I'll fool around like it's, the way I write songs for the most for the most part. I'll be I'll be writing I'll be playing some songs and I'll just be fooling around on the guitar a little bit and all of a sudden a little catchy look it will come to me as I'm playing and then I'll maybe and some words will come along with it and and that then i'll get a, like a, a little chorus going with this a little hook and a little little catchy you know lick on the guitar and that's basically most of my songs has come right out of that and it but it's basically waiting because i'll be like singing some of my songs or singing worship songs and i'll play for another like a half hour or an hour and all of a sudden i said mm, that's you know then when you're you're kind of in the spiritual mindset you, you establish like a, a spiritual setting for yourself to be able to you know, to be in an atmosphere where your career, you know, it's a creative atmosphere that you've established by being in, in, in worship and you, the presence of God is there. And all, you know, all of a sudden you, you, you fooling around with this and fooling around that all of a sudden you know, some words come out and you all of a sudden presto, the song comes out. And so anyway, that for me, I, I, that works big time. So. Man, you've had a very big blessing. It sounds like in finding the studio that has been just cranking these out for you. You want to tell us a little bit about that studio and give them a shout out yeah. and a little bit about the guys there. And you want so to give them a shout I out. asked my pastor, and since I knew this other guy that I was talking about, he um, he wasn't in town anymore. He, he left town and you know took his uh, studio with him somewhere, and I, I could never get a hold of him. I was trying to get a hold of him, and so I was I wouldn't want could we, you know we joined the inner circle, and I was trying to get somebody to record some of my songs, and I, I wanted somebody who reliable. I, want, I was hoping to get a Christian you know studio. Uh, and so I asked my pastor if he knew anybody. And he said, yeah, this guy's just starting out. He's uh, got a brand new studio. Uh, I know him from um, some of the, the meetings that they need. In, uh, they call it um, pin ministry. It's uh, people in need ministry for the, for the poor. And they were my pastor and this other guy were involved in this ministry. And so this guy, other guy who's also actually a magician, a magician, magician, he's a magician, all right, musician. And... Um, he just started his studio called Shed Studio, and all it is is a, a shed in the back in the back of his house, right? Little, little, small, little place. But the experience. But then once he, once I find, you know, I got his phone number and hooked up with him. The thing about him is a young. He's a young guy. He was at one at the time. He was just thirty years old, right? When I first got in the studio with him, but he had been. He has spent years in studios, working with other studio musicians, and being in studios and, and getting the knowledge of doing it. So he was very, very wise and very, uh, he, he could pick up a song. Like he, he always, he tells me this, you just bring me the skeleton and I'll put on the meat. I'll put on the, you know, everything else on top of that skeleton and make it a song. <clears throat> Basically it really worked for me with him because I can just take my song in there, you know, my, just my, my vocals and my, and my lyrics, <clears throat> give him the song and just, and he'll just figure out the, the, you know, the beats per minute, you know, timing wise. Sometimes, sometimes my timing was a little bit different than what he thought. We worked, we worked around all that. He'd figure out the timing and everything. And then he just put his, he's an outstanding guitarist and he could, he could play. He, he, I prefer to have him playing on my songs as far as acoustic guitar goes. I play acoustic guitar, but he, he's very good at the precision timing wise. He's flawless. You know, it's not making any mistakes when he's playing, when he's recording, he has that experience. And then he has his other friend who's a, a uh, a piano player who's an outstanding player, player and they work together together we've worked together great as a team as far as organizing the song just making the, the, the bottom of the framework of, of each song we've done um i'm just you know we just we all love each other now because we're just we have this teamwork in fact we're doing a uh, a live band recording uh in here in a couple of weeks <clears throat> yeah so we're gonna have that and, and so of 10 songs of mine 
the, they're going to back me up and we're going to have that, you know, recorded and put on YouTube as well. So I can't wait to see what you keep cranking out. Like, honestly, he's got a lot of stuff on his channels. I'm going to put links on how you can connect with Rick, either if you're watching on YouTube in the description for the video, or if you're mm -hmm. watching in the crazy blessed worship, Facebook private group, if you're watching the event, I'll make sure that you have all the, li the links to follow around with Rick and just get to listen to some of this stuff. And then a fun one. So Rick has agreed to help with Crazy Blessed Worship. You're going to see his name popping up. Because honestly, the group is getting a little big for just little old me. And I want to make sure that I can keep up with everybody. <laughs> and honestly, I just, I love Rick's heart for people, for growth, that he is all about just the kingdom and directing people down that path that God has for him and um, working together as the body. So you'll see him pop up more and more and he's going to, he might do some interviews by himself. I might do some interviews and we might both do interviews together and uh, just kind of whatever it is to help grow you guys in your creativity and on your walk. And um, however you need to be helped, we're here. Um, keep encouraging everybody, participate in the Feedback Friday post. shows up about noon every Friday. And same with the Saturday share. That shows up about noon every Saturday. And um, as soon as we've seen everything come in, um, just really excited to kind of follow up and see what we can do to support. And if there's anything that blessed you out of this that would be great feedback for Rick. Drop it in the comments. I love the feedback from these interviews because honestly, they're just to bless you guys and whatever it is on your walk and to share whatever creatives that God's just like, you know, share about this person. Because I know the more we connect with the person, the easier it is to connect with that music. And um, knowing that meaning and the connection to God, it just makes that music that much more impactful. So and like we've touched on before, if the enemy can use music to influence people, that's where we as Christians get to come in with our music yeah. to influence people right. for the kingdom. Right. So, all mm -hmm. right, I'm going to connect everybody with Rick, get those links in for you. Anything, if you listen to his stuff, you check it out, you go follow him on his social medias, like, comment, especially share that helps more than you know. I really appreciate when you guys do that with Crazy Blessed Worship. I'm always like, cool, we got another subscriber. Oh, I love it. They commented, you know, and just getting to know what it is that just bless people is huge. So, um, and if you would like private coaching or group coaching, let me know. My email is crazyblessedworship at gmail.com and just drop coaching in the subject line and we can talk. So thank you very much, Rick. We look forward to seeing more of you on here. And we wish you guys yes, a ma blessed day. Looking forward to work for you, with you. <laughs> yeah.